Good afternoon, everybody. Today's Thursday, the 14th of May, 2020. And what do we got going on here? Basically, I'm waiting for the UPS driver. He should be here any minute. Keeping an eye out for him. D uh, delivering a new thermal rifle scope uh, that I'm going to put on one of my, probably one of my ARs, I'm thinking, to interdict these damn coyotes that have been waylaying all my ducks. And this particular video is about <clears throat> when I, I'm going to zero the uh, scope today, I think. But the cool thing I thought was cool, some people use like a hand warmer and duct tape and they take one of those chemical hand warmers and crush it up and duct tape it on a target and then, you know, go back and zero the rifle uh, by shooting at the thermal radiation coming off the hand warmer. And I thought, why ruin a perfectly good hand warmer? So what I'm gonna do, I just fabricated this guy. This is a six inch steel gong, AR-500 steel. And normally we would paint it high vis and shoot it visually. But what I'm gonna do is hang this bad boy off this other uh, steel target, heat it up with a torch. So this guy will be heated up to, I don't know, I don't think it really matters, probably a couple hundred degrees. Uh, so I'll heat it up and then I'll go back in those trees back yonder. That's the 100 yard uh, shooting point back there. And we'll get that, we'll get the rifle zeroed at 100. Shooting at a warmed up piece of steel right there. So I'll uh, get the scope mounted. First I have to do some lapping probably on the mount. So it'll take me a little bit to get everything set up. Probably a couple hours. But assuming I get to it tonight, if not tonight, tomorrow, I'll shoot some video of uh, getting the new scope zeroed and we'll see how this works. If nothing else, I'm not wasting any valuable hand warmers, right? Who knows? You might need them next winter. All right, guys, quick follow-up. The uh, UPS guy did, in fact, find our house. Yay! And delivered the uh, new thermal scope and the Vortex quick detach mount that will put our mount the optic on top of the uh, AR-15. So what I'm doing now is I took the Vortex Razor HD. Beautiful scope. If you ever got behind one of those before. Uh, so that came off, and I'm getting ready to put the thermal on, but step one is to get the quick disconnect mounted up, and then get it lapped. And if you're unfamiliar with lapping, there's a whole kit here that we use. Bleep. And what it does is we, it's a grinding thing. So right now I don't want to turn this because it doesn't have any compound on it, but basically this uh, simulates, if you will, the scope. Big, heavy piece of steel, and we cover that with a a gritty, uh, almost like a grinding compound. It actually looks like this. It's 220 grit wheeler. It's just like a paste that's got some really fine 220 grit, grit um, abrasive features to it. Uh, then we put the top of the scope rings on, tighten everything down. I use a, uh, you can either do it by hand and move this thing back and forth. I'm too damn lazy to do that. So I use the drill and this attachment here. And you basically spin this thing a couple hundred times, back and forth, back and forth. And what we're trying to do here is essentially map, or match, I should say, the top of the scope rings there, the mount, to the bottom, and to do it in a way that's um, optimized so there's no gaps. So anything that's engineered, even this Vortex uh, one-piece cantilever mount, even this thing, which is a lot of money and it's really well engineered, it's no, no engineering is perfect, you know, not even for the space shuttle, for Christ's sake. So what this does is it um, grinds down the uh, conduit, if you will, through which the tube of the optic is going to be mounted. So there's no high spots, there's no low spots, perfectly flush. You know, it takes like an hour of grinding. Uh, I think it's worth it because it means once you get that scope mounted into the mount here, it is not going to move. Even if you put this on a 50 BMG rifle, it doesn't matter. Uh, it's going to be so locked down, so tight. Uh, with no no air gaps, no spaces, no unlevelness between these mount rings, it's good to go forever. So that's the next step. We've got everything set up. I'm gonna shut my ass up and get to grinding. Take care. Ooh, baby, that's tight. That's where you want it. Get over there. It's hard to do with one hand. There we go. Kind of get the idea. Back and forth, round and round. 
We're grinding away a little bit of metal material from the inside of the ring. No need to go fast. That's what she said, right? Yeah. Anyhow. That's what lapping the scope mount looks like. We'll do this for another minute or two, then we'll take the top of the rings off and look for high spots and low spots. This is a good first test. All right, so that kind of gives you a sense for what, why we're doing what we're doing. Um, it's almost like bearing raises in a car engine or something like that, but you can kind of tell. You can see here how it's shiny, and here it's kind of shiny, and it's dark in the middle on that one. That means the inside and outside were high points, and that grinding process has ground away some material from both the inside and outside. And in the center there, we haven't really made contact yet, so basically we've improved the surface area that will make contact with the scope so we'll get a better lock. This one's even better. That was pretty pretty consistent. That's a nice even, you know, there's no striations in that one. The uh, back looked pretty good. That's the back bottom and the back top. So the two, the two top parts of the mount both were high on the inside and outside and low in the middle and again here. So I may grind a little bit more off just to get these center um, low spots down to the point where they're touching the scope a little more but you get an idea why we do this uh lapping of the mounts well alrighty then got the scope all mounted balanced level yada yada that thing is just beautiful one of the reasons i bought this i've been doing a lot of reviews on this but one of the things i like about it is it looks like a conventional rifle scope rather than looking like one of those big old boxy looking stupid ass uh, other earlier generation products were out there. It's one of the reasons why this thing's so expensive is they built a lot of electronics in here. I mean, it's a computer. This thing is basically a computer. It is a Wi-Fi enabled computer with Bluetooth and yada yada yada. It's it's best way I can describe it is it's a goddamn computer. <laughs> so we'll get her out there on the range, get her zero there in a little bit. Um, for now. I'm not sure this is the ultimate home for this guy, but this will be my coyote popper for now. So, uh, thermal scope and uh, D ball I2, so for infrared. So, it's got all the, and it's got a white, you know, regular visible light on that side. So, visible light, infrared, and thermal all on one platform. Said it before, we'll say it again. Let the coyotes beware.